time is 7 o'clock. I call the meeting to order. Please join me in the Thank you, Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Before we go into the agenda tonight, I would uh, I would like to ask that uh, we observe a moment of silence for what's uh, happened, the tragic events that happened in Las Vegas. And as you do, I would just ask that you reflect and pray for those who are victims and those who are first responders. Please join me in a moment of silence. Thank you. This time, uh, I'd like to uh, move on, uh, remind the council if there are any conflict of interest <coughs> on the agenda tonight, uh, please uh, say so uh, prior to voting. And I would ask uh, for a motion to approve an amended agenda. I'd like to move the executive session uh, to a point between the proclamation and personnel. Move that motion to approve the agenda with the changes to move uh, the executive session to women to be George? Would be between the uh, proclamation, proclamation and, and personnel. personnel. Is there a second? I second it. Okay, it's been moved and seconded that we uh, amend, uh, accept the agenda as amended to move the executive session between proclamation and personnel. Any questions, comments, or discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Ask you to look at the uh, minutes that you have in your packages from the September 18th meeting. I would accept a motion at this time to approve those minutes. Motion to approve the minutes for the September 18th meeting. Second. Been moved and seconded to accept the minutes. Any questions, comments? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. <laughs> Move on into uh, claims. We're looking at, uh, first of all, bills in between. You should have those in the package. I accept the motion to accept the bills in between. Motion to approve the between. I'll second that motion. Been moved and seconded to approve the bills in between. Any questions, comments? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. As item B is the current claims. Again, you have those in your package. I accept a motion to approve the current claims. Motion to approve current claims. I'll second. Get moved and seconded to approve the current claims. Are there any discussion, questions, comments? I, I just have some comments. We have a lot of big bills in there that um, I think need to be. Um, Evans Plunge Group, we do have that. $222,992, we need to get reimbursement for that. Um, SEH is $25,614, and that's for the airport. Um, and that actually has reimbursements too that we get back um, <coughs> DOT and the airport community. So I just want to bring those up. Those are a lot of big ones. <laughs> oh, okay. And we do get reimbursements. Okay. Any other comments? Okay, all those in favor of uh, approving the current claims say uh, uh, aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Next item on the agenda is the Wells Fargo credit card. Again, you have a list of those in your packages. I'd accept a motion to approve those charges. I'll make a motion to approve the Wells Fargo credit cards. Second. 
Okay, it's been moved and seconded that we approve the credit card purchases. Uh, are there any questions, comments, or discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. At this time, we have communications from the public. I'd open it up to the public uh, for communications from the public. Can you go ahead? Uh, could you go ahead to the microphone? Good council members, my name is Christopher Elmquist. I'm with the American Legion Riders. And uh, on behalf of the American Legion Riders, we wanted to present the city with a certificate of appreciation for their support with our freedom ride that we have every year. This year was the best year we've had in a very long time. We had uh, the state commander from the American Legion, and we also had our state representative, Christy Nolan, on that ride. Next year, we expect to have those two again. They've already signified that they'd like to come. I have got with the Legion riders. Unfortunately, they couldn't make it here tonight. It's a short notice. I sort of came up with this this afternoon. So if you'd indulge me, I'd love to present the mayor with this uh, certificate. Why don't you come, go ahead and come up uh, right here and we'll do it in front of the public. It's just a certificate of uh, appreciation presented to the City of Hot Springs in recognition of their support of the 2017 Freedom Ride Benefiting Veterans and Community Legion Rider Programs. Mm -hmm. This is presented by the Battle Mountain American Legion Post 71, Chapter 71 Riders. And on behalf of the City of Hot Springs, I'm very glad to accept this. We appreciate all the work that Post 71 uh, does. We appreciate the patriotism and seeing those uh, Harleys uh, move out of the state home, uh, roaring and uh, flying those flags behind them. And it makes everyone realize that we truly are a veterans town. So thank you very much. Okay, we, have we got any other communications from the public? West Drive. Um, I've seen your personnel tonight. You're apparently going to promote Kim Barbary to the city administrator. <clears throat> In years past, the, the council's felt it necessary uh, for that position, um, the person to reside in Hot Springs because it's such a kind of a high wage job. So I guess I'm Kind of curious, is this still required, or did uh, did this get changed in the job description somehow, or can you tell me that? The uh, requirement was not in the job description, so it was taken out. It wasn't. Harley had to move everything. Yep. Was it in this one? Well, no, I did no, not I see it, it in the one. That I we think maybe no one. So the last administrator took it out just as professional courtesy, I guess, then. Any other questions? Well, I'm just curious. Is this going to be a requirement or no? Well, that'll be up for the council to decide, and we'll be meeting in executive session. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other comments from the public? Communications. If not, uh, moving on, the next item on the uh, agenda is the proclamation for the Black Hills Area Habitat for Humanity World Habitat Day 2017. You should have that proclamation in your packages and uh, I would accept a motion to approve that and if it is approved, we'll go ahead and read that this evening on this uh, <coughs> Second day of October. I'll make a motion to approve uh, the Black Hills area Habitat for Humanity World Habitat Day 2017. That's second. 
Okay, it's been moved and seconded that we uh, approve the executive proclamation for World Habitat Day. Are there any questions, comments, or discussion? Hearing none, I'd uh, ask all those in favor to signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And uh, I'll go ahead and read that uh, proclamation. Executive proclamation, Hot Springs, South Dakota, Office of the Mayor. Whereas on a global scale, about one in four people live in conditions that harm their health, safety, prosperity, and opportunities. And as whereas, on a local level, 955 people were homeless in South Dakota in 2017. Whereas, secure tenor not only facilitates opportunities for investment and wealth accumulation, but also provides a source of identity, status, and political power, and serves as a basis for the pursuit of other rights. And, whereas, the United Nations General Assembly has declared the first Monday in October as World Habitat Day, a time to unite in worldwide effort to eradicate poverty, housing, by raising awareness and advocating for universal decent housing, we can change the systems that reinforce poverty, housing, and make affordable homes a reality for all. And whereas in recognition of World Habitat Day 2017, Black Hills Area Habitat for Humanity will continue to build and preserve simple, decent, affordable housing for families in the Black Hills and will continue to address the lack of decent housing around the world while reducing environmental impact by recycling building materials through habitat restores. Now therefore I, George Cotty, Mayor of Hot Springs, do hereby designate October 2nd, 2017 as World Habitat Day. I encourage all Hot Springs citizens to work toward the elimination of inadequate housing. In testimony thereof, I have hereto set my hand and caused to be affixed the seal of the city of Hot Springs this second day of October 2017. Thank you very much and thank uh, Habitat Humanity for the good that they do in providing homes. At this time, I'd accept a motion to go into executive session. I'll make a motion to go into executive session. We have Mr. Mr. Mayor. I know you've had public comment, but I wondered if I could answer to the proclamation you just read. Oh, yes, absolutely. I'm sorry I didn't uh, recognize that it was... I apologize for extending your council meeting, but Mr. Mayor, no, no. council members, Larry Zerman, I'm Secretary of Veterans Affairs, but looking for something to do when I retire, I've joined the uh, Habitat for Humanity Board. I'm also on the Coalition for Native American Homeless. Uh, this is from the Habitat for Humanity, and I'm going to read it so I don't, I don't mess up the portion they wanted me to say. To succeed in eliminating poverty housing around the world, in our lifetime we must promote smart policies that advance access to adequate, affordable housing. According to the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, families who pay more than 30% of their income for housing are considered cost burdened and may have difficulty affording necessities such as food, clothing, transportation, and medical care. An estimated 12 million renter and homeowner households now pay more than 50% of their annual incomes for housing. Black Hills Area Habitat for Humanity's vision is a world where everyone has a decent place to live. Through partnerships like this one, we can become leaders in creating sustainable and transformational development. We aim to serve 60 additional local families over the next five years and look forward to this imperative relationship with the City of Hot Springs. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and to the City of Hot Springs, your continued support. I might add that over after I retire from my present position, I'm going to do everything I can on Habitat for Humanity and the Coalition for Native American Housing to house homeless veterans and get affordable housing to veterans. So I thank Hot Springs for everything they've done. I've been here on many occasions. We have our state veterans home up the hill from here, and we are glad to be a part of this great city, the veteran town, and, and taking care of veterans. So thank you for giving me a minute to read that letter. Okay, and thank you very much. Thank uh, you, Mary. appreciate you, you being here.
Thank you, Larry. Thank you. Be sure to add the personnel to the executive sessions when we go into it because we have the contract negotiations and legal. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay, at this time I would accept a motion then to go into an executive session for personnel and for legal and contract negotiation. I'll make that motion for executive session for legal and personnel. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. We go into executive session. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And we will have a decision.
six will be on that admin meeting. A recommendation for approval by the council uh, for cash on hand at the airport as requested by the airport manager. We reviewed a uh, proposed a re a proposal to refinance the sales tax revenue bond for evidence. <coughs> Copies will be mailed or uh, emailed to all council members, and this will be on the November 6th uh, admin agenda. <coughs> Review of surplus airport asphalt soil millings for sale are used by the city, not to be auctioned. Review and approve invoice uh, travel request form and claim voucher proof. Uh, notice of state minimum wage increase, and that's all. Okay, thank you, Carolina. Airport Advisory Committee, Georgia. We met 929 uh, on Friday, and we did uh, have Ken attend. She gave, they gave her a welcome and hopes that she'd get elected tonight. <laughs> Chosen. Um, the committee did talk about, uh, um, or explained a lot of the information to Ken about where the money comes from and um, for the airport and how the city interacts with that. We did talk about petty cash funds and new claim vouchers out there, and, and it was important that those things were taken care of. Um, the uh, October 3rd, we'll have a meeting uh, on, with Tracy and the state, DOT, and uh, that will be about the tax event. Um, advertisement with KLJ. Um, has been really positive, I guess, uh, for some of our things that have been going out there. And we talked about the plow getting a space that would be heated because they had frozen breaks this last winter. So he was unable to use it for a little while. Until it got thought out. And that was it. Okay, thank you, Georgia. Custer Fall River Waste uh, Management District, Ron. Uh, next meeting is November 9th. We are the Ruler Civic Center at 7 p.m. Okay, thanks, Ron. Uh, Downtown Historic Preservation Commission, Carol Ann. Uh, we'll meet this Wednesday at, is it 5.30 p.m.? Or 5 o'clock. 5 o'clock. Evans Plunge Advisory Committee, Scott. We had a meeting. We discussed getting another committee member. We also prioritized a plan for the closure. Um, and we discussed the ADA ramp options. Um, our next meeting will be October 19th. Okay, thanks, Scott. Uh, Parks, Recreation, Beautification, and Cultural Development, Marty. We met today, October 2nd, uh, 3 p.m. at City Hall in attendance. For Mayor Cotty, City Engineer Tracy Bastian, Krista Spillane, Jerry Culligan, Dwayne Stanley, Chris Katke, the Miller Center facility, uh, facility Manager, uh, myself and Pat DeSmit from the Rotary Club, and Brian Spitzer from Spitzer Construction. It's been a big meeting today. Uh, old business. Uh, we discussed school park and it was confirmed, since it had been confirmed that it is not required to remove the existing playground equipment at the park, we are now tasked with determining whether to refurbish that equipment or replace with the playground set that uh, no one had received from the city of Lee. Uh, we're still waiting to receive some more documentation regarding that lead playground set. Uh, we do have pictures, but we're looking for more documentation as far as uh, actually assembling that playground set. Uh, there was a discussion regarding the Brookside Park irrigation system and completion of the picnic shelter joining the new bathrooms. Uh, we're still waiting for some materials and estimates on both jobs. Uh, City Engineer Tracy Nash reported that work will begin soon on roughing out areas that are slated for the continuation of the Freedom Trail. Uh, and new business, uh, it was uh, brought to our attention there are some safety concerns at Umaker Park and uh, most involved remnants that are left over from the former trailer park that existed there. So we discussed uh, the possibility of perhaps a temporary closure of the park until these hazards are removed, and uh, that will be brought to the attention of the city crew. Um, also in attendance, uh, as I mentioned, Pat Smith from the Rotary Club. Uh, he reported that the Rotary, Rotary Club are the recipient, recipients of a $7,500 grant for a new stage at Centennial Park. Uh, there's approximately 4,000 from other contributors as well. They've accepted a bid from Spitzer Construction to build the stage for $14,689, and they'll now begin funding 
uh, fundraising efforts to raise the balance of funds necessary for construction. They hope to have that done by uh, sometime close to spring of next year. Um, that was it. Our next meeting will be November 6th at 3 p.m. And the public is welcome to attend. Okay, thank you, Marty. Planning and Zoning Commission, Arlene. The next meeting for planning and zoning will be October 18th at City Mall. Okay, thank you. Uh, public Safety, Bob. The uh, Public Safety Committee met September 20th at City Hall. Uh, Mayor Cotty, Chief Close, Officer Schaefer, and myself were uh, present. Uh, we approved the installation of the street light to increase visibility in the alley adjacent to the property near 1738 Albany Avenue. Uh, drove by there the other day and the light's already up. So thank you to Black Hills Power and Light and Billy for coordinating that. Uh, in your packet on the info side, uh, there is the um, final recommended edits from the Public Safety Committee of the ordinance uh, for swine, rabbits, and dog bites to include suggested changes from the City Attorney. Uh, it was approved and will be included in the info side uh, for your comments. Finally, bond schedule was discussed. The city attorney talked with Chief Post and Officer Schaefer about the process to write citations related to violations of city ordinances. Uh, we talked about um, a request from Sheriff Evans to extend Yellow Street parking on North River Street near the crosswalks at City Hall and Farrell, Farrell, and Ginsball. Uh, Billy is working with the uh, South Dakota Department of Transportation to see what the possibilities are for linking. Uh, linking no markings uh, to increase pedestrian safety. Uh, Chief Post gave us a monthly update uh, from the police department. Because of efforts of the police department, the suspect has been identified in connection to the recent two vehicle robberies. Uh, Officer Schaefer was involved in a traffic stop and netted two pounds of marijuana. The vehicle is also being seized by the state uh, of South Dakota. Training, or taser training for all officers has been completed. Police Department will be seeking a uh, grant from Homeland Security for the purchase of three in-car uh, cameras. I have approved by the council the city would purchase the cameras and then be reimbursed for the cost. Uh, police Reserve Unit, uh, a meeting to begin possibly increase the number of uh, police uh, reserve officers will be held on September 26th. I also have an update on that. Neighborhood Watch Groups, uh, Officer Wynn Scott is working on organizing those watch groups. Uh, the Public Safety Committee is asking for public support to make this a successful endeavor. Uh, there's been an increase in um, uh, deer within the city because of recent dry weather. Uh, and we're asking the public to be alert to, uh, to deer in your neighborhood and cautious while driving your vehicle. Uh, the next Public Safety Meeting will be October 18th at 2 p.m. at City Hall. I would like to provide an update on the meeting. That uh, in relation to the uh, reserve unit, uh, sent everyone an email uh, summarizing uh, our discussions. Uh, it was very productive. Uh, Chief Close was there, Officer Chafin, Officer Schaefer, and myself. Uh, so if you folks could uh, take time to look at uh, everything we discussed, uh, offer some, uh, you know, any uh, feedback on that. The next meeting will be October 16th uh, to continue those discussions. Okay, thanks, Bob. And uh, yeah. do reiterate that uh, deer, thanks, deer safety. We uh, saw about five deer crossing the bypass waiting to Woolies for dinner tonight. Mm -hmm. and, uh, <laughs> almost uh, got run right over. Um, public Works, Bob. Public Works met on September 26th. Uh, Mayor Cloudy, Chief, and myself. The uh, sludge watering device uh, ventilation system and controls is progressing, and completion of the project is expected with two weeks. Uh, Boulder Falls construction and increase of crews for the Boulder Falls construction project has resulted in significant progress of the project. Installation of curb and gutter and asphalt should begin soon. Uh, I believe the mayor will even have an update on that. Um, we've been uh, working with a um, resident at uh, 902 Galveston who had asked the city to uh, stop double billing for uh, a water service for two separate structures. There's only one uh, curb stop uh, but two meters. The property owner um, agreed to install a separate curb stop for the second service by the end of uh, 
November, uh, or the uh, city will resume uh, billing for the additional service. Uh, we discussed the uh, sewer line extension on uh, Fresno Avenue. The estimated cost to extend the sewer uh, is from ten to eleven thousand dollars. There is sufficient money in the sewer funds to complete the extension. Uh, the current system is failing for one of the residents, and they have asked the city to extend the sewer line to their property. Uh, existing property owners in the vicinity of the extension will not be required to connect to the extension until their respective sewers fail. Um, conversion of city um, locations to solar. A uh, discussion of that uh, conversion of several locations to solar power will resume after a new city administrator is hired. So congratulations. <laughs> discussed a little bit in executive you want to say that? Uh, current person contracted to read the water meter uh, submitted their 60-day notice. Uh, the city will need to look at hiring someone to replace this individual. The next uh, public works meeting will be October 18th, 2 o'clock at City Hall. Okay, thank you, Bob. Southern Hills Economic Development, Sam. Uh, the next meeting will be on October 19th. Okay, Southern Hills Golf Course Advisory Committee, Skyler. Our next meeting will be on October 9th at 5 o'clock at the Crossroads. And volunteer fire department, Ron. Our next meeting will be October 10th, 2017, House Springs Volunteer Fire Department. Okay, thank you. Moving on in the agenda to resolution, we have resolution 2017-17, a resolution to surplus city unusable property. Uh, and uh, you should have a list of that property in your packages. I'll accept the motion to surplus that property. Motion to approve res resolution 2017-17, a resolution to surplus city unusable property. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded uh, to uh, surplus this property listed. Uh, are there any questions, comments, or discussion? Are these dumbbells and stuff coming from the farm? Is that right? Yes, that they, is where they they've been placed. Yes, they've already been placed. Okay. There are some matching sets and some unmatching. Okay. Any other comments or questions? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We have a possible motion and discussion to approve a taxi license application from Monroe Taxi Service. You do have that application in your packages. and the uh, paperwork that they have uh, met the qualifications. I would accept a motion to approve that taxi license at this time. I'll make the motion to approve the taxi license. We're we going to list some stipulations. And I'll give them to you. It's on the memo. Yeah, okay. Yeah, didn't I make them today? And I can give you another one. I brought it okay. Uh, to approve, <coughs> approve the application contingent upon an applicant within 30 to 60 days of paying and provide proof of the required insurance listed in the ordinance, a list of rates and fees to be charged to riders, a state of South Dakota business license, a sales tax license, commercial, commercial vehicle plate. I'll second that. Okay, it's been moved and seconded that we uh, approve that taxi license application with those stipulations listed in, your, in the letter in your packages. Are there any further comments, questions, or discussion? Hearing none, I'd ask all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. I'd like uh, to ask that item B be tabled until our next meeting. Uh, there's been some confusion uh, about this agreement between Southern Hills Community Recreation Initiative and the Mueller Center, and uh, they need to get together and come up with a, a concrete plan, and uh, they would have that available at the next meeting. Uh, I'd accept a motion to table item B in new business. I'll make a motion to table item B in new business. Okay, it's been moved and seconded that we table item B until the next meeting. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? 
motion carries. Item C on our agenda is a possible motion and discussion to accept a Homeland Security grant in the amount of $27,760 for the purchase of three in-car cameras. These are 100% uh, reimbursable. You do have the paperwork for that grant in your packages. And again, this is a uh, excellent uh, opportunity for our police to have updated equipment to protect both themselves and the public in the carrying out of their duties. So I'd accept the motion to approve that, accept that grant. I'll make a motion to accept a grant from Homeland Security for the amount of $27,760 for the purchase of three in-car cameras. Okay, it's been moved and seconded that we accept that uh, Homeland Security grant. Are there any questions, comments, or discussion? I'd just like to say it's a great idea to, you know, have a lot of, um, it's good to have new equipment for the police, and it's also good to have more, you know, transparency and accountability in light of recent events. Okay, very good. Absolutely. Thank you, Sam. Any other comments? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We also have item D, a possible motion and discussion to approve the, the automatic budget supplement of 20. $222,492 to Evans Plunge Building Repair uh, for 621-45150-42520 for the roof replacement project. Uh, that's uh, revenue that we've received from Claims Associates Insurance. That's the claim that we submitted for the hail damage uh, uh, and the claim numbers listed there in your agenda. I'll make a motion to do an automatic budget supplement of $222,492 to Evan Plunge Building Repair uh, for the roof replacement project. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded that we approve that automatic budget supplement. Are there any questions, comments, or discussions? Hearing none, uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, next on our uh, agenda is a possible motion and discussion to approve Cable Forston LLP for the 217 audit services. Uh, their bid price is the same as uh, last year at $19,750, plus will require a major federal audit, as I understand right, uh, Misty, uh, for an additional $2,500. <coughs> I would accept a motion to approve Cable Forstenson as our auditor. I'd like to make a motion to approve Cable Forstenson LLP for the 2017 audit, audit services, $19,750 plus $2,500 for major federal projects. I'll second that. Okay, it's been moved and seconded that we uh, do accept uh, Cable Forstenson as the auditor. Uh, any questions, comments, or discussion? Hearing none, uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We move on to item F, uh, um, another motion and possible, another motion and discussion to set a public hearing on the, uh, at our next council meeting for a temporary alcoholic beverage license to the Boys and Girls Club for the Wine and Reese event to be held at the Mueller Civic Center on November 4th. I make a motion to set a public hearing on uh, October 16th, 2017 for a temporary alcohol beverage license to Boys and Girls Clubs for the Wine and Reese event to be held at the Mueller Civic Center. I'll second that. Okay, it's been moved and seconded that we do have uh, that uh, uh, hearing uh, at 710 on the uh, 16th of October to set that uh, alcohol beverage license. Are there any questions, comments, or discussion concerning this? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The motion does carry. Could we do G through I? Uh, we can do G through I as one uh, uh, one, uh, one item, 
uh, again, you have those packages that had a chance to review the uh, training requests and travel requests in the packages. I would accept a motion to accept items G through I. I'll make that motion that we accept G through I uh, travel requests. Second time. It's been moved and seconded that we uh, accept those travel requests. Again, Gordon Wimpen, Lori Sherrard, and Billy Morrow to attend various safety and uh, uh, water treatment uh, courses. Any comments or discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Moving on, uh, finance officer report, Misty. start by saying how happy I am to have a new partner and congratulations Kim in your city administrative position on the board working with you. Thanks for coming right up to the hot seat. Um, I did provide um, financial reports through the 28th of September to council members. I know due to the timing these are not month end September reports. Um, I can reprint them for you if you feel uh, the need to see the end of September reports, but just due to timing, they were uh, printed on the morning of the 28th after we received it in the money from the day before. As always, you have the year-to-date profit and loss summary report, fund summary report, cash balance report, and investment reports for review. Um, we are fairly close to on track in almost all of the funds. Um, something I'd point out is the revenue received from the Evans Punch Tail Damage has been receded in, which makes it look like Evans Punch is at 100% of their revenue for the year, which looks great, but they didn't have that 222000 uh, We wouldn't be at 100%, but they're still very, they're doing very well on track for the projection. Um, so I'm not putting them down by saying that, I'm just pointing out that that's one of the um, abnormalities you'll see in this report, because we recognize that revenue that you just appropriated, and so it will essentially be spent out, and it'll be a wash, but Excuse me, Misty. Do we have some order? I'd like to quiet in the back, please. If you're going to talk, either whisper or go out. Thank you. Go ahead. As always, if you have any specific questions about these reports, I know it's a lot of numbers, and I hear from a lot of you kind of glaze over when we start talking numbers, but <laughs> if anything stands out to you you would like to research or investigate further, please don't hesitate to ask. Um, I encourage and uh, appreciate all the questions you have, but I don't want to overwhelm you if you're glazed over with like, more than you're interested in. Um, as always, if there's something I feel that needs your attention, I will bring it to your attention. Um, on September 21st, municipalities were notified by the South Dakota Department of Labor that effective January 1st, the state minimum wage will increase from 8.65 an hour to 8.85 an hour. I will have a resolution for 2018 that will establish the 2018 part-time and seasonal employee pay rates. Uh, we did uh, the same kind of thing in 2017, uh, worked on the draft of that, planned to review it with the department heads that will be um, affected by the increase and then uh, we'll show it to the council, admin, finance, and then the council in January for review. On September 18th, we were notified by Rural Development that they approved the additional 200000 requested for the Boulder Falls Road Improvement Project at the rate of 3.25%. Uh, the Finance Office is prepared to file the Special Assessment Roll to the County Auditor on the 31st of October. Thanks to Mary Hardy for her work on that. Uh, there are 126 lots that were assessed out there, so it's a big job. Make sure we get all that information correct. I did uh, hear from Ron Bradeen, the auctioneer we hired for the city surplus auction. Uh, when I printed this report, I hadn't heard back from him yet, but I talked to him on Friday. He's committed to coming down either Thursday or Friday this week, and we hope to get the auction scheduled and start reviewing the items that we have and uh, schedule or a plan of attack for our marketing. And so those of you interested in the items for that auction, hopefully we'll be able to see those um, online soon. Miss, is he going to discuss the, the properties as well at the time? Or? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we will be doing uh, surplus properties and property. Okay. All at the same time. Um, I went over a little bit the engagement letter from Cato's, the same as our 2016 rate. There's a lot of benefits to staying with the same company, but they also were the uh, cheapest. I shouldn't necessarily say cheap, the lowest cost. <laughs> 
Um, they do an excellent job. Anyone who came in for their readout, I think you'd all agree. Uh, we really enjoyed working with them uh, prior to them being our auditors when they were providing accounting services. And then last year was the first year they did our audit for us. And it was quite a bit different than the last auditor. They came to us as opposed to us boxing all up and sending off the source documents they wanted to review. They came down and spent a few days at City Hall. It was much more effective. Um, it was easier. We did not, uh, we, in our 2015 audit, we had a documentation that was lost. And so whether we lost it or the auditors that we sent it to lost it, we couldn't really prove that. So we eliminated that with them coming. Um, so I appreciate you uh, voting with your confidence to have them do the audit again this year and I look forward to a successful working relationship. I did also want to point out that we don't just use them during the audit. Anytime questions come up uh, regarding our finances, they're quick and easy to work with. And they also have a, a large team of resources that they can help us answer questions when it comes to payroll or tax issues. So it's not just for the auditing services that we use them and they don't charge us any extra for those questions. And any of you who have worked with me know that I ask a lot of questions and I really like to fully understand things. So they do provide a very good service to the city in addition to preparing an audit. I think that you have all seen the new claim vouchers that we intend to replace our current purchase orders with. I haven't ordered them yet, but I plan to. By the middle of October, we will use up our existing supply of purchase orders. Um, and so we do have a couple more weeks for any input if you have any. Uh, I just wrote a little note about what was uh, approved or not approved during budget sessions. I uh, put some clarifying statements in there if anybody has any questions. As always, please uh, ask and I'd be happy to go through them. We talked about it a little bit at Admin Finance and I think we're all very clear that even though we approved budget authority, uh, we are not, when we did that, we weren't approving any purchases that didn't follow either state bid laws or our procurement policy. When the purchases are made, we still need to follow those. And yay. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Dean. Uh, we really appreciate the, the hard work and the detailed reports that uh, you provide for us. Uh, as far as the mayor's report, uh, one of the things uh, I do want to welcome officially, Kim, you as our city administrator, uh, it was a vigorous process that we went through to hire. We did have a hiring committee that's made up of uh, Joyce Farrell, Joe Muller, Misty, Bob, and myself. Uh, we uh, did a thorough interview, uh, sent out questionnaires, and had uh, uh, oral interviews, and uh, Kim rose to the top, and uh, we're very glad that uh, uh, she accepted uh, the opportunity. I want to thank you, the council, for your due diligence and uh, thoughtful questions and that uh, you asked and asked during the executive session and the discussions that we had. And I, I think uh, that was very, very helpful uh, to all of us. One of the things that uh, I do want to address that was brought up earlier, and I don't know if Wes is here, but I appreciate the, uh, uh, the uh, question that he brought up, that also was discussed and I think one of the important things that's important for the members of, of Hot Springs and citizens of Hot Springs to realize that we do have a council and a mayor that provides oversight to all city employees and all of us are required to live in Hot Springs. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we, uh, we can't uh, always get uh, the best and most highly qualified person to, to live here, uh, but in the surrounding area, which we consider, uh, you know, our hot springs area, and I think that's, uh, uh, that's important. But the important part is that uh, we do have that oversight from you. That's our responsibility as a council to oversight, oversee all of our city employees. And uh, if we enforce it for one city employee, we have to do it for, for all of our city employees. So I think that's a uh, uh, way that we can answer that. And I do pr uh, appreciate Wes uh, bringing that up. And I don't see him in the audience. 
Uh, I did uh, receive a, a letter uh, from Cindy Reed uh, uh, concerning the Badger Clark uh, Cowboy Poetry Gathering and Music Show, the events that were held here at the Mueller Civic Center and at our uh, golf course uh, clubhouse. And I'd just like to read a portion of that letter. Uh, it said, uh, the 2017 Badger Clark Cowboy Poetry Gathering Music Show enjoyed a tremendous 20th anniversary event with super high attendance. Without your specific commitment input, such success would not have been possible. And uh, there's a note at the bottom uh, that Cindy wrote uh, by hand, Rick Cohen and I, and the next, uh, uh, in the rest of the Badger Clark Committee, wanted to say how much the new sound system and other improvements at the Mueller Center were appreciated. And I know you as a council approve that, that uh, sound system purchase and uh, uh, you can see that it is making a difference in one of the uh, premier events that we do hold here in Hot Springs. It brings people here. And I just wanted to pass that word of thanks on to, to each of you and also to the Mueller Center staff for the outstanding job they do in supporting events like this. And finally, uh, I just wanted to uh, publicly on behalf of the city say a special thanks to Scott Hayden. I know Scott's not here tonight, but uh, he's made, uh, made some excellent contributions to our Hot Springs community as the director of the Chamber of Commerce. And uh, we appreciate his ability to market and uh, our community to bring visitors in here uh, to help support the businesses and uh, do a host of events that uh, add to the flavor of Hot Springs. I think it's important for us as a council, as a city, to recognize that we have to be partners working with the Chamber of Commerce, of course, economic development, to allow Hot Springs to grow. And uh, I think they are a key factor in helping us grow our sales tax base and property tax base, so uh, we need to continue that, that effort. I know the executive board is searching for an ample replacement to replace Scott. Uh, I know that Olivia and Justin will keep the chamber moving forward as they do. So again, I want to publicly acknowledge uh, Scott's contribution to Hot Springs as the chamber executive director, tell him thanks and wish him the best of luck in his future endeavors, and thank goodness he's staying in Hot Springs. Uh, he'll be uh, supporting veterans at the VA. So that, uh, I do want to say thanks. And one final note, I have a picture on my cell phone. There's actually pavement going down in Golden Falls. So uh, we're excited about that. And, uh, if, okay. <laughs> What was that, Caroline? I missed that, but probably a good thing I did. <laughs> With that, I'll accept a motion to adjourn. Motion. Second. Been moved and seconded to adjourn. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 aye.